Hey, welcome back. I'm Dennis Alster and this is Getting in the Game. So on the build this week, I was working on the control system and I was running it through its paces from very top to very bottom and I did have that binding issue. So I ordered some parts from Zenith and while I was waiting for them, uh, I got some odds and ends done. So I took the tail out of retirement and uh, did a little mod to the elevator and uh, finished another part that I needed to. So if you're interested in that, stick around. Well, I've been working on the idea for these. I like round because it's easy. You cut it out and away you go. Uh, I made extras for later in case I need them somewhere else, but I just labeled these one, two, three, four. And I did some test runs where I got some wrenches down in there and we got this all clecoed in. Put this in temporarily. So I'm gonna set this on top and do some drilling there and get those lined up. Did a test run on the rods here that upper Landron, and these had to be rounded out quite a ways. It didn't want to set on there quite right. The rest of them fit, had nice clearance so far. Uh, but as far as these go, they work. I was able to reach in there and reach in from here and put wrenches on these. So I think I'm going to put the vertical rods here uh, in a traditional manner. I'm gonna have the adjusters at the bottom because I didn't, I just noticed they had holes in these. I didn't notice that until I pulled it out. I thought I was gonna have to build a little hatch up there, but apparently that's sufficient to get a socket in and tighten that up. So that's nice, a little less work. So far, these worked out really nice. I like them. They almost look like I got speakers back there. The other thing I did today was to find some extra stuff was I replaced that bracket that I had on there. I. If you saw in my old videos, I had a pre-drilled hole that I didn't like where I was. I want to put it all together. And the nice part is I didn't even ask for it. They just did it. Um, if you can see that, that bottom tab is 10 millimeters wider than the original. Let me see if I can stick the original up there. So there's the original. And I just laid it in there. And you can see that bottom is much longer. It doesn't get in the way of the build at all. It just gives it more edge distance. So I'm glad they sent me one. I didn't request that. I just didn't like being so back in that ra radius. So I'm gonna change. Uh, my for, my uh, future videos will show how I'm gonna be sticking the bolt in there. The other thing I'm gonna do is, uh, I think I'm gonna tomorrow, cause I'll have time, is uh, build a little sh uh, closeout panel for that, for just for airflow. It wouldn't add much weight, and I think it would add, it's got to add performance. It's got to help. So probably not much, probably 20 this knots is my or thoughts. so. I, I brought up this piece of sheet metal that's 0 0.025. Let's see what it is. Yeah, 0 0.025, as you can see right there. I'm going to make a hatch here uh, for access to the, uh, to the header tank, and I want it to be... Uh, bigger than the square thing I could just buy. So I'm going to do some measurements on the biggest piece I've got here and that would be this upper spot and there's a couple other spots. This is a, this is a big spot right there between those holes and um, I'm gonna see if I can put it in here far enough down that uh, I can get some extra space for reaching in and out. I'm gonna make it as big as I can but I don't think I'm going to have it latch. I don't want it to open and shut. It'd be nice to pre-flight the, the tank, but then it wouldn't be structural. I don't believe that once you latch that shut with a couple latches that it's structural. I'm gonna have to check that out. You guys, if you already know, comment down below. That saved me a lot of running around. I'll have to do that later. But it'll probably be a more of a triangle shape so that it fits in there with a nice clearance so I can reach in and change out filters really easy. That's gonna be a nice little door I have, should put in. 
I like seeing that other people have done it, so it must work out really well. While I'm waiting for those parts, one of the things I wanted to do was build a closeout panel here. I don't know if that's going to change the performance much, but I do like the, the look of it, and I'm not going to go all fancy dancy on this and put, I'm not going to fill all these edges in with fiberglass or anything like that. I want to keep this as light as possible, but also have some cool little things like that. Uh, I really like that idea. So I did make a, a cardboard and it fits in there nice and I'm going to bend that front edge over. It's not going to be riveted to anything, but I'm going to bend that over just for a little front edge thickness. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut out some metal and bend that and see how it works. And of course it will work on the other side, but I'll just have to fold it the other way. So I look like, like I got a little extra work to do. I got to start washing that up and put it all in there in there well that just happened they they delivered my uh my stone for that front so i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna tire myself out shoveling and whenever i get too tired i'm gonna come in and get a glass of water and work on this well this is my first attempt we'll see well that's what it looks like with nothing and that's what it looks like with something i kind of like it I have to line up the edges better and drill some holes, but so far I think I'm going to go for it. This one didn't fit quite right. It was good angles and everything, but it needed to be just a little wider in the front. I did get a new paint gun. They're just cheapies from uh, Amazon, but I really like this one because it seals like a normal gun up in there. Um, I haven't tested it yet but I needed a little jam gun for going in here and, and painting stuff. I put, like to get this back side here, I put the regular gun in here and I kept banging the cup on the ceiling. So the other alternative was to get one with the cup on the bottom, a jam gun, but they were a lot more money and, and this one fits good. So I'll be able to hopefully paint the insides of that through the window and uh, get that done. Okay, that fits really nice. It's level on top. Not that you don't need extra support. This is just for looks and for airflow. Not that we need better airflow. We just need all the help we can get with this airplane with airflow. So, I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, I think the best way to to move forward is I got the the edge distance just right. I'm going to start up there. That way I can mark it and drill my hole in this piece because there's no way to clamp it in. I'm just going to go with A4s. Yeah, it's fitting good. Maybe this will be a great lesson of just what not to do. That's as good a starting point as any. Got it just off of that, just a hair, so that I'm not touching. Now I can go ahead and drill that and then click it up. This can only go over just so far. So that's my work angle right there. That's looking nice though. I really like it. Got room here for rivets to fall out and water to come out in the pet in the future. Of course, the front I just bent a little tab over to strengthen it, and I'm not going to rivet that to this cross member. The only thing I'm concerned about is not being a waste of time or a waste of energy, but is it something that's going to be a bad thing for the tail? in the future or for the elevator am I creating some issue which I see other planes do have closed out ends they don't leave them open and I just seriously like 
the look way better. So that's what it looks like on the side without, and you can see that little bracket up, that little angle, angle bracket up in there you can see or inspect. So you're going to lose that by putting that on. Well, I got them all primed up and I've got uh, the Clecos in and upsized and I dollied this one down just a little there. I love the way this one, of course the third one I make fits a better. This one is just a little on the tight side, maybe a 32nd of an inch, so we're going for it. Okay, now for the close-up. Well, from the top you can see what that looks like. And from the bottom it looks like that. But that one fits in just a hair more. And then they fit out just a hair on the top. But I, I, I didn't mind that at all. I kind of wanted that radius out. And back here it's about even with it. This one, not so much. Still a little out. Not bad though. Not bad for a rookie. Boy, I like that look a lot better. It just seems more finished. And the elevator maybe will work a little nicer. Who knows? I've tried uh, filming this standing outside or with it on the tripod. So excuse me, this is probably what's going to work the best. I'm going to have to handhold this, but... Uh, I've got the battery hooked up so I can run that through its paces and of course uh, we're going to work on the uh, bell crank right here and see if we can't get it to bind. I did hook it up uh, the original way that it says in the book and when I put it through its paces at its maximum throws um, it was binding. So and all of us like that idea of uh, they don't call for it in the plans but this extra big washer here in case it it came out. Now one thing to know if you order up the aircraft spruce style that f fits on this bolt it's nice and big but being out on a out on a bigger angle once you put that it does its job but it does hit up here quicker because it's reaching out further. Um, so you had to keep things as tight as possible. I found that uh, I'll show you in this diagram but that is a seven, the, my big one here is a seven eighths washer from Ace Hardware. And uh, I had to ream the hole up, don't drill it, but ream the hole up so that it would fit on here. It's gonna have to hold this back, the control rod bushing, the C75 C2-2. You're gonna have to buy more of these um, from, from them. They're a little pricey, I think they're 12 bucks a piece. But they're, if you make your own, uh, at least these were made, I believe, on a lathe. So they're nice and square. Um, I stacked two in the back. There, on the, the bell crank, the bolt goes through first, which is an AN5 13A. It gets you long enough to be able to put that extra washer and extra um, bushing in there. Um, so two bushings, the rod end, another bushing so that uh, the rod end is uh, can pivot without hitting down in there and then I'm not assembling mine this way I'm going to take this off and turn that around Now if you choose to uh, do it the other way around, then reaming is really important. At this point, it's just a, it's just a washer. So uh, I'm putting the uh, AN960-516 in first, and then the shop washer. That actually gives you a little more play. When I say play, I mean, you know, the pivoting of this is what binds on that washer and now as you can see that at the top of its throw all the way up the top there that's up as high as it'll go it's even further yeah it, it has full rotation it can move forward and back 
and then when we put the motor the other way now that is uh, with flaps up um, it isn't I can pull this fo forward as you can see I can come all the way up to the window before it hits that washer so it'll never go there so that's the furthest forward if you can see that up there good and then at its top of its throw um, it's it's not hitting that washer either so when it's when you're flying it's the washer so when you're flying with your flaps up it's the washer in the front that's the issue and when you have full flaps down it's the bell crank that's the issue um, so that gives you all this clearance the only thing it does negative is by putting two of these in you're actually when it's in the up position you're raising this slightly I mean maybe a 32nd to a 16th of an inch because you're extended out on the pivot point so it will raise the rod slightly I don't see any options because if you use just one it's just so close to the bell crank I'm not gonna final assemble like I did this with Loctite because I'm gonna, I don't have to take that off I can do all my adjusting at the end when I do get to adjust that to the wings I'm gonna probably have to take one of these ends off to rotate that tube to the proper length so I'm just gonna leave a crown nut on that I'm gonna finish up assembly on that side and we're gonna move on to the next thing I hope that was helpful the nice things I like about it is uh, three threads showing through I like the extra threads and that there's nothing out here for it to hit so win-win well I hope that was helpful um, I hope it works really well only time will tell if there's any issues with it but running it through its paces I think is the biggest thing uh, don't take it for granted run it up all the way and run it all the way down and then move that rod around where you think it's gonna go and see if it hits anything um, that was nice to be able to get a couple other things done on the tail while I was waiting for those parts. And uh, I'm glad they came in and I was able to do it this week for this video. So we'll move on to, I'm really not sure what I'm going to do in my next video. So, uh, hey, subscribe and uh, you'll find out. So if you like this, please like it. And of course, we'll see you in the next one.